Welcome aboard, Trailblazer, to another episode of the Weekly Fashion Gazette, the show where we get into the nitty-gritty details of your favorite character's visual design and explore the good, the bad, and sometimes the most stylish takes on fashion and design. Today on the show, we have Yu Kong, held master of the Skyfaring Commission. She's an adept pilot that has seen her fair share of battles, and indeed, those battle scars have been carved deep into her design. From her outfit to her phone cover, there's a lot of things to look at here. But before we get into all that jazz, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe down below so that the almighty algorithm might hear my prayer. And with that, let's jam. I have seen the last ray of light right before a sun dies, and the pulsing volcanic veins akin to flesh and blood on planets brought to life. I've seen the Lux arrow of the Rainbow Arbiter flying to places light years away and the rainbow memory bubble of the glow swather bursting within flames. <sighs> Wars are fought with armies, and an army can usually be divided into three parts, namely the rear, the main, and of course, the vanguard. The vanguard comes from the Anglo-French avant-garde and usually referred to the troops that marched ahead of the main army. This was done for a number of reasons, including scouting hostels, skirmishing enemy lines, and securing ground in advance of the main force. In naval battles, the vanguard was sent as an advanced ship that would initiate the enemy fleet, and in aerial battles, fighter pilots would engage in dogfights and aerial assaults to chip off enemy forces. A pilot spirit never dies. We already know that Yu Kong is a retired pilot from a backstory, but there are a lot of other aspects to a design that tend to evoke this role of a vanguard. For one, there is the etymology of her name. Yu means to control or drive. Kong means sky. Hence, she is one that has control over the skies. Much like an ace pilot or the helm master that guides the Xianzou Luofu with her interstellar navigation skills. And now that I've butchered that Chinese word, let's explore more Chinese culture. The greatest weapon of ancient Chinese history was the bow. Employed since the Neolithic period, the sheer versatility and usefulness of this weapon served as a powerful component to an army's attack strategy. Archers often opened up battle proceedings by firing massive volleys into the enemy and then protecting flanks of the infantry as they advanced or their rear as they retreated. Archers had to have acute spatial awareness of the battlefield in order to determine its flow and maintain the front line of the army. Yu Kong is an archer through and through, not only with her weapon and stances, but also the style of her right glove, which was fashioned after an archery glove. The tails of her outfit also have arrows embroidered on them, and on top of all that, there are many archery terms in the copywriting of her kit, such as Bowmaster, Arrowslinger, Archerion, Salvo, and her talent called Seven Layers, One Arrow. Now, the icon used for Seven Layers, One Arrow can be found seven times in her design. The front, the back, both her arms, both her hips, and on her kite. But what do these seven layers mean? It could refer to the famous Seven Kingdoms of the Warring States period, but my money is on the fact that it could be citing the seven military classics. These were seven historical military texts used by ancient China that include Sun Tzu's The Art of War. A sword will vibrate and beg to be unsheathed if it is unused for too long. But once unsheathed, it will either paint the battlefield in blood or break itself in the process. Either way, Chinese warfare plays a significant part in her design. Something else related to Chinese warfare is actually found in her idol, where she's seen reminiscing with a kite. Today, kites might be seen as toys best used for a windy day, but back in the Warring States period, they were used exclusively for military purposes. The first Chinese kites were used for measuring distances, which was useful information for moving large armies across difficult terrain, much like a vanguard. They were also used to calculate and record wind readings and provide a unique form of communication similar to ship flags at sea, much like a helm navigator. The first kites were what we today would call prototype kites. They were made of light wooden cloth and they were designed to look like and mimic a bird's natural flight, much like the kite Yukong is seen with in her idol. The specific bird Yukong's kite is fashioned after is called a kestrel. A member of the falcon family, kestrels are small birds that are best known for their tendency to hover high in the air before swooping down to their prey. Kestrels are also sometimes referred to as wind hovers due to this behavior. You can find this bird on her phone cover, her kite, and also the basic silhouette of her entire outfit. And this little bird actually perfectly represents Yu Kong as a character. The kestrel is fast, it's controlled, and a keen watcher that waits for the perfect moment to strike like an archer waiting to let loose an arrow. The kestrel hovers in the air, taking time to plan out its next move rather than acting haphazardly, like the vanguard of an army. And due to its small stature, they don't rely on their wings, rather they wait for the perfect wind that will carry them towards their prey at insane speeds before soaring once more into the air, making them masters of the wind. 
The wind is rising. And as per theming, you'll find a lot of references to the wind when it comes to Yu Kong. The vocabulary of the kit, the patterns of the design, and several of her voice lines all have this idea of the wind. But what makes the wind so prominent to her character is how it relates back to everything we've mentioned so far about the design. In archery, arrows were projectiles that could easily be swayed by weather conditions, hence archers always had to account for the wind. In naval navigation, the course of the sea is often determined by the wind, and in aerial situations, pilots often had to account for wind speeds in order to achieve the optimal flight paths. Even in wars, many armies have fallen thanks to not accounting for weather conditions that have to do with the wind, because in many instances, the wind can bring in new factors that can serve as a force of change. Some might be carried away with these winds of change, and others will try to brave it. But if there is anyone that can manage to use the wind to their own advantage, they will be known as the one that has control over the skies. Thank you for watching this episode of the Weekly Fashion Gazette. Admittedly, this one was a rather short episode as Yu Kong is a four star and her design is not too complicated. But being a star character, there's a lot to think about here. She is the first four star character on the Gazette, however, she is not the first character. So if you'd like to see more of those videos and future episodes, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video and comment down below on some of your favorite things about our fox mommy. Imbibido Rune is coming out this week, so he will probably be the topic of the next video. And after that, we'll see how it goes. Anyway, that's all from me, the Star Rail Crusader. And Trailblazer, may your journey lead you ever starward. <laughs>